Okay, this is us kind of getting to the wrap-up stage within um, CS5 Essential Train. Hope you've enjoyed things, but here are a dozen little quick tips and features that I haven't talked about too much, or if I have touched upon, let's just touch upon them again, because I can't quite remember everything that I've recorded. So to start with, my favourite way of zooming in and out an image, navigating an image, is Command or Control plus and minus. So if I click on Photoshop here, I may just do that. It zooms in and out. I now have a new way that's even better and it's going to the zoom tool so get used to pressing the Z key and make sure you have scrubby zoom ticked because if you click and scroll to or move your mouse to the right hand side we zoom in if we go the other way we zoom out and you can obviously just navigate around things so if you click on let's say this boat down here it will zoom in to the boat. If I want to get the brightest part of the picture, click and zoom. And it will zoom in there as well. And it does it really smoothly. And then back out. If I want this part of the picture there. And back out. You get the idea. And then V back to the move tool. So I still use the old fashioned way as well. But if I want to specifically track and move to a point of an image, quickly press Z with my thumb and then I just zoom into that area to navigate and then back out again to see the whole image. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is really cool. I've got this image open up here that we worked on earlier on. It's 16 bits per channel. If I wanted to save this as a JPEG under previous versions of Photoshop, I would have had to have come up to image mode and knocked it down to 8 bits per channel and then saved it as a JPEG. Now in Photoshop CS5, I can go to File, Save As, I can go to my desktop, I can choose JPEG, I can click Save, and I can just automatically save it, and it converts it to an 8-bit file straight away. So if I do Command or Control O, click on the image here, and we'll just bypass the camera raw hopefully and open it as a JPEG, and you will see it's now RGB 8 bits rather than 16 bits. So that's a huge time saver and it also you know, stops you from mucking up your previous image as well. Okay, tip number three kind of comes back into the whole layers improvements. Now, if I open up, and I'm just actually going to go back to my essentials panel, double click on adjustments so you can see blank layers here. There's a new feature within the scripts to delete all empty layers. So if you've got quite a lot of empty layers, this is a cool way of clearing them out and leaving any layers with information in them intact. So if I click that, it will then clear all the empty layers off, ready for me to save. So you've been working on a composite and maybe accidentally created several, you know, blank layers and you're not planning to use them. Just go into File, Scripts and delete all empty layers. So that's tip number three. Okay, tip number four comes down into the category of you learn something new every day. If I take this image, do Command or Control J, Command or Control T, and just resize it so that it's a different size, and let it do its thing. I didn't know, or didn't realize, because I've never done it this way before, that you can drag an image directly into the layer mask icon and it creates a layer mask from the empty space, which is really cool. And I think you can do it in CS4 as well, but I'm gonna add this one in as a tip for CS5 because I discovered that I was mon monkeying about with CS5. I'd read in somebody's blog about it, they were talking about it, and I thought, God, to think I used to basically, and if I just actually do, do Command Z, would Command click and then click on the mask you know, to drag it in just makes that a little bit faster. But I've discovered something else. If you hold down your Alt or Option key and do it, it actually inverses the selection and hides the object itself, which you can then reintroduce using the appropriate brush. And you can see it starting to come through. And I'm using one of the natural media brushes, but you get the idea. So. That's just another one of the little tips for CS5, but I've got a funny feeling that could be done in CS4 as well. 
Tip number five is a real quickie. If I go into Image, Adjustments and Shadow Highlights, if you ever use Shadow Highlights, it used to come in with the Shadow Adjustment Amount set to 50%, it's now set to 35%, which gives you an awful lot more flexibility from a starting point of view. So, just a quick little refinement to the Shadow Highlights that's going to make a big difference for those of you who use the Shadow Highlight command. Tip number six, halfway through, and this one is an absolute doozy. You can now record your printer steps as an action. In other words, I've set up a folder with printer, Epson R200, press record. If I do file, print, whatever settings I set up in here, and I'm just going to do some sort of random ones, random ones, printer manages color, perceptual, I'm not really worried about uh, too much, units or inches, documents, profiles, RGB 1998, and then I click either print, and once I get to this point, I can proceed and actually print the document, or you can just click cancel, it now memorizes all your settings. So you can actually set up for specific resolutions, papers, color management settings, and once you've got them set up, call upon them as an actual action, which is really, really cool. Okay, we're back to the layers panel for this tip. Creating groups. Command or Control G allows you to create a group for your images. Well now you can actually add groups within groups and nest them up to five deep, which is really, really cool. So rather than having loads and loads of group folders, you can actually put groups inside groups and get all your composite elements really, really organized. So there you go, groups within groups within the layers panel also makes for easy deleting as well. Tip number eight is a sneaky little new feature. You can get to it on the Mac by doing Option Command and pressing W. So on the PC that will be Alt Control W. Um, or you can go to the Close All option from the File menu. And what it gives you is if you've got more than one image open up, you can basically apply to all, for example, don't save, and it will close them down and not save them, or you could do it to save them. So if you've got loads of images open that you've maybe used as a composite, you've saved off your composite and you just want to clear your desktop, it's a new, faster way of getting everything cleared out without having to go through them all individually. Tip number nine, and we're in Adobe Camera Raw. If I'm on the Zoom tool, for example, and I want to go to the Crop tool, then I press C. But if I actually press C again on the crop tool, it will actually take me back to the zoom tool. So for example, if I might press B, it will take me to the spot removal tool, but I press B again, back to the zoom tool. If I do to the crop tool, then to the zoom tool, and I press B again, it will take me back to the crop tool. So by pressing any of the shortcut buttons twice, it will take you back to the previous tool. And from a workflow point of view, that can be really handy. Now tip 10 relates to the workspaces. If for example, like me, you want to have the photography workspace or the essentials in a different order, you can click and drag them and actually arrange them. If once you kind of get used to you know, what's new in CS5 and you don't really want to see it anymore, then just click, grab this little option here and you can collapse everything down or stretch it back out and just show the workspaces that you want to see and you can then toggle between these workspaces and the rest are all tucked away in a sub menu down here which makes for really effective use of the new workspaces area. Now the sharpen tool has had a little bit of a makeover so you just go into blur and then down to sharpen tool you can see we've got an option now to protect the detail. So if I go to my Z key, just zoom in a little bit, round about there, and then back to the sharpen tool, I can sharpen specific areas, painting, but protect the actual detail of the image. Whereas in CS4 and CS3, it would have destroyed the image by now. The final quick tip is going to take a little bit longer, so best for last. There's a new parameter within the adjustments panel for auto selecting. Now let me talk about this first of all. If I, I've got my adjustments panel here and I click on levels, 
you'll see none of the boxes are selected. Okay? So if I then go into my panel menu and do auto select parameter and then I call up a levels, you will see the first box is selected ready for a keyboard input and I can then tab along to the next keyboard input and then choose different options if you wanted to do it numerically. But that's just for levels. If we do it for curves, it goes that little bit further because we can then choose Auto Select Targeted Adjustment Tool, which is this tool here. And that means from now on, when I click on Curves, I've automatically got my scrubby slider, which then allows me to, you know, lighten or darken straight away. So it's auto selected the targeted tool, the scrubby slider, as I like to call it, and you can then target specific parts of the image to then control it. And this just makes a huge difference to actually speeding up how you use the curves within Photoshop. So there you go, 12 quick tips for Photoshop CS5, or rather 11 and one that you can actually do with CS4 as well.